similar to like um, Superman when he came here. I'm just, I can't believe I'm using uh, DC Comics, but Superman when he came here, um, he there was this really cool scene in Man of Steel. I don't know if you watched that movie, but there, there was that part where um, he was seeing everyone's bones and everyone's muscles, you know, like his eyes, you know, and so he couldn't control his powers yet. See, our society would have labeled him as handicapped mentally in some sort of way or, or, or you know, banish them, you know. But um, he actually was going to save the world. I mean, he was there. And if they just controlled it, he harnessed his power. He could be a very powerful person. He became Superman. You know, and so I feel like there's a lot of children out there who are being highly misunderstood. Uh, and if um, we actually attuned our eyes to see that they're just more elevated spiritual beings, we would treat them as such and help them to grow. So our children, I mean, I don't want to go too public about it, but our children have special gifts that have, have boggled my mind where I just, it, it it validates that there is a God. It just completely does. And I, and so my goal, which I've never had before, is to be this very supportive person and say, hey, you know, tell me about that. It's like, that's a gift. You know, you can pray to kind of keep bringing that out and exuding that for you. And you're, you're not weird at all. This is, this is a beautiful thing you have, you know, and I want you to grow it. And I think you'll appreciate it in the future, mm -hmm. you know. A lot of children don't have that. They have the adults like, what are you doing? Like, why would you, you saw something, you didn't see anything. You know, it's like they're just that way. Um, what's a, with, with your children, for example, what's a really great lesson that you've taught them that you're like, this is something you guys have to know, you know, because I feel like in my mind, I'm like trying to like plan out their, their like early studies of like, Emotion code 101, like that's in fourth grade, you know, frequencies, like, you know, I feel like in my mind, that's even more important school at home than their, you know, what's X plus Y, which I still haven't used yet, um, you know, to this day. Um, <laughs> but what's, what's one lesson that maybe sticks out in your mind that you're like, I really want my kids to know this. This is super important. I wish I would have known this when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, what's one thing that comes to your mind? Well, my baby's 14 months, <laughs> so I'm still in the space of the cuddles and the loving and, um, and what I, I feel like my prayer over my son, um, the little that I can, I teach so far in his age and his learning is just, um, knowing that he has a soul and a spirit that he's not just physical Right. Um, I feel like when I ground and when I speak to his spirit, I feel like that mindfulness of that connection to God and connection to his spirit allows me to understand, I feel like, where that cry comes from mm. or where that um, anxiety comes from or um, even the process of co-sleeping and the process mm. of, of weaning off nursing and, and the little harder things that we've transitioned to have a more um, balanced, I feel like, home routine. Um, I feel like if I would have just done, um, and, and there's no right or wrong, I feel like in parenting, Oh my goodness. Very sensitive like, subject. <laughs> it is. We're all learning, you know? Yeah. And so I feel like this is, I feel like I have a really great moms that I look up to because I'm always like, okay, I don't feel like I'm doing, I don't know if I'm doing this right. <laughs> but I, um, I feel like something that I, I like to practice because it was done for me mm -hmm. is, is just like, I feel like if you take co-sleeping, for example, there's a training program that I went through, you know, and it was very A, B, C, D. But I feel like because I understand emotion and the meanings we create and how we hold them and how we perceive them and that process, I feel like I was more gentle and I, I, I trusted myself not doing it exact because right. I'm that kind of person that I would have want to follow like everything to the T to know that I was doing everything right that I could possibly do for mm -hmm. him. But I feel like um, giving space for more of that spiritual soul to soul connection mm -hmm. and looking behind the physical and being aware of his feelings, even though he can't express them necessarily in a way that I can understand them quickly, he's always communicating with me. And mm -hmm. so I feel like that really assisted the process of him transitioning from cuddling in bed with me. So he was nine months and into his own room and in his own bedtime routine. That's awesome. They, it reminded me what you were saying um, of like General Patton that talked about 
how um, in the military, you know, you can, I, I went to JROTC, so I didn't go to like full on military, like, you know, ROTC, but, um, but I learned this one thing that said that, you know, you, you set these sort of parameters in war, you know, and like, this is what you do. You flank this way, you do this. But, um, but in times of war, you know, there's, there's a lot of room for improvisation that because this might not go as planned and you need to move forward, you know, so when you were talking, it kind of reminded me of like, you were, um, the intuitiveness that happens between the bonding of between a child. It's like, it's like there has to be leg room for the, the, the mom and the little one to bond and the special power that's innate in you that was like given to you from above uh, this intuition, you know, or even the spirit talking to you, the Holy ghost telling you, Hey, your son needs this, or Hey, your son's in danger. You know, um, I think that's where the mom grows and it's spiritually with the child, you know? And so mm -hmm. I think that's really important. Um, I also feel um, one of the, the things I always love to bring up, and I'm glad that you brought up the soul one. That's that's such a that's so powerful. You said that because um, there's there's a really great quote that I like. I don't remember the, the person who said it, but it said that um, you know Jesus Christ never had an identity crisis. He knew who he was before he came here. He knew who he he was. I said he knew who he was before he came here. He knew who he was when he came here, and he knew where he was going. And, and when you're that liberated, then you can serve, you know. And for me, I feel like a lot of people, the reason why they, they can't receive that joy in service is because they don't know who they are yet, you know. And so um, for me, I wish I would have known when I was a kid, like, where where did you come from, you know. Like, why are you here? Where are you, go where are you going? Um, because even if you're in your healing journey, and but you don't know that major component of why your spirit going through a human experience and why this is so important to, to moving forward, that your progression goes beyond your death. I think it's like, you could probably question yourself. Like I know this healing is great, but it's like, what are the, what's the end game of this? But now it's like when you realize where we came from and, and you know, obviously you and I both, um, well, you grew up in the gospel. Um, I think it's so, I didn't grow up with the, oh, okay, you're a convert. Okay. Yeah. So you and I are both converts. Um, I think it's, it's interesting that like how much that's gold. Like for me, I, I would have everything stripped away from me, like, and become completely homeless and just eat, you know, a small crumb every single day. But if I knew why I was there and where I came from, where I was going, I would figure out a way to like, to regain my true identity here on earth, you know? But I feel like there's so many people out there lost going like, okay, yeah, I've had lots of trauma. Like, why did I have this trauma? Like, did I choose my habitation? Like Paul talks about in the scriptures, you know, did I, did I choose this life because it would somehow progress? You know, a weird, a weird thought that, that came to me right now is similar to the fact that, you know, people go like, I, there's no way I would have chose my abuse for my parents. Like, you know, there's no way I would have chosen that. But what if, what if you did choose it? Then you're not a victim. And you, maybe you wouldn't have gone through an accelerated healing journey if you didn't go through certain kinds of abuse. I think about that a lot. It's, it's, it's so powerful if you think about that because then anyone right now who's thinking you're a victim, I, I want you to flip your mind and just say, what if I chose this, these parents here before you came here? And I know that's true because um, I'll say this one last thing and maybe you can share your, your thoughts on this is um, in the body code, there's a thing called the preconception trapped emotion. I kind of mentioned to you earlier um, and that you can get, you can accumulate trapped emotions before you came on earth, right? Um, and what's interesting is that there's two big ones that Dr. Bright used to talk about. One was grief and the second one was fear. And so grief was very common that you created yourself in the spirit body because you're grieving your celestial home that you that you came to earth and you left your home. There's a grieving emotion that you came to earth with. Fear is fear of impending life on earth. So those are the two common ones. So think about it. Why would you have fear of impending life on earth unless you saw a glimpse of what you're going to experience in this life or who you were choosing as parents? Just because you chose them and it's going to be the best for your growth doesn't mean you're going to have peace while you're going down your, your little tunnel that you created. So maybe there was fear going like, okay, here I go. This is the parents that I chose that supposedly they're going to help me grow, you know? And so um, what are your thoughts on that? That the thought about like, maybe we chose where we, we um, kind of uh, started off. And if you didn't start off there, would you have, would you be on this journey where you're happier now 
than somebody who maybe had just a regular life, no, not much trauma, whatever. There's no real kind of push to like grow in the extensive state and to serve others. So you're not even just, you're not only growing, you're growing and serving people. Would it, would you, would that person come out if you didn't have your past to grow from? I know you've probably thought about this. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, What's amazing about where we're at right now is that I feel like this is the very moment that keeps you in the circle of trying to heal every single moment Mm -hmm. and finding the meaning and the why into full liberty and wholeness. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it was the revelations, very key revelations that happened in this very moment we're talking about that got me to where I am today. 